bring everything but the hog out. Think we eat nothing but grass, what you talking about? I'm about to jump into the whip and hit the whole foods early. Get everything to get that soul food working. Like mac and cheese, the collard greens, the black eyed peas, and get a roast of that tofu turkey. Got cornbread, even got stuff. Mashed potatoes so good, put your hand in it. Stream beans, and you know we got yams with it. Welcome back, all you beautiful souls spreading compassion in the tofu cube of truth all around the world. Today I'm actually going on to do an interview with the Sun newspaper here in Scotland. We're actually talking about my past as a slaughterhouse worker, obviously what I experienced in that place and obviously talking about veganism as well. So. It's going to be quite nerve wracking. This is the first time I've ever really spoken, obviously, to the media about veganism. I've obviously spoken in the media quite a lot about my personal story from my eating disorder recovery. I've spoken at Scottish Parliament and such like. This is something a bit different. So what I'm actually going to do, guys, I'm actually going to record all the audio for you just to let you hear absolutely everything that goes on because you know what some of the papers are, newspapers are like, they can quite turn things in their favour so I want to get used guys to hear everything that I say hopefully I do well and it'll be a learning experience because next week I'm actually going to be appearing in a documentary that's going to be on BBC it's going to be part of the Guardian newspaper that's actually doing it so they're going to come over and speak to me about my past as a slaughterhouse worker actually take me to the slaughterhouse that I actually worked at going to be doing a bit of speaking about my experience, talking about veganism and such like, so hopefully this will be something good for you guys, something a bit different in the channel, and it's going to be something that I'm going to do a lot more of, because I'm only going to keep growing my vegan activism here forward, like I say, we haven't even started on this channel yet, you've not seen anything yet, it's going to keep growing guys, because every single day we've got to use our voice in the best we can for the animals, in any way we can, so... I'll speak to you all soon and hopefully we can get a good little bit of audio here and let you hear what happens. Yeah, how, how is she? Yeah, she's struggling quite a bit because obviously she's got ovarian cancer and things at the moment, so it's been quite a kind of rough journey, but she's getting yeah. there gradually. Oh, that's a shame. I'm really sorry to hear that. Yeah, thanks a lot. Just going to do my best. There's always somebody worse off than yourself, as the same goes. Yeah, that's, do you know what, that's a, a good way of putting it, but yeah, you've just got to kind of be there for her, I suppose. That's it, yeah, they're just trying to do their best, so hopefully she can get some help shortly, and she's she's getting three monthly checkups and things like that, so they're keeping on top of it at least anyway, so... Oh, okay. Well, that's, that's good, that's good that she's, um, well, is, is, she, is she getting a little bit better, is she... Well, she's suffered a lot of kind of complications, she's got double incontinence, and she had to have a full hysterectomy and things like that, and... It's, a, it's affected her because she's taken a lot of fits and things because of the the medication and things. She's damaged both <coughs> damaged both knees and she's to go in for a double knee replacement and a hip replacement as well. So it's just been one thing after another. Yeah, I can imagine. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that, Tommy. Thanks a lot. I appreciate that. Yeah. Well, I, I send my best wishes. Um, Thanks very much. But yeah, so, I mean, with, with today, mate, basically, I'll kind of, kind of give you a background of, like, what we're looking for. Yeah. Um, we were talking about, um, like, in the lead up to Christmas, things like that, we were saying, okay, look, most people are kind of becoming a bit more aware of, you know, where are their foods coming from, and there was actually an article that came out maybe a couple of weeks ago, which was saying that um, abattoirs and slaughterhouses, they're really struggling with people, uh, well, with, with staff in general. Yeah. So... You know, my theory was like, okay, well, not theory, but like my direction I wanted to go with was, okay, well, let's talk to someone who's been there and the, let's try and kind of reveal what it's been like. Um, and obviously, um, I was actually um, shown you by someone on Reddit. Um, and so they were like, I need to check out this guy. He's, um, he's really good. He's probably like the exact person you, talk, uh, you need. And I was like, yeah, this is brilliant. Yeah, yeah. I've been looking for videos and stuff, which are really, really good. I really, really do enjoy Thanks them. Thanks very much. Um, so do keep that up. Thanks <laughs> a lot. I will, I will definitely will. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, so, Tommy, I've just got, like, a few questions. Um, feel free just to kind of, you know, go off on one. I'm not going to kind of, like, you know, stop you if you want to bring up or anything um, yeah, uh -huh. like that. It's it's fine. Um, so I'll just basically, just to let you know that you are being recorded on my dictaphone, just that's, purely for when I do. That's great. Yeah, that's fine. When I 
when I do the um, the write up later, just so that we don't miss anything and I don't misquote you or I don't that, do anything like that. That's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. No worries. So, just in your own words, Tommy, just explain who you are, um, your age, and just kind of what you're all about now. My name is obviously Tommy Kelly. I'm actually 38 years old, and I'm from Ayrshire in Scotland. And I've got a YouTube channel, obviously, Tofu Tommy, where I talk about veganism, my religion, and obviously my vegan activism as an organiser for the Save Movement and Anonymous for the Voices here in Ayrshire. Mm -hmm. I was obviously a slaughterhouse worker for three years. I started in 1997, right through to 2000. But obviously at that point, I was my mum actually passed away, so I had to actually leave the place in the year 2000 because... I developed an eating disorder, but I was actually a meat, a meat packer in the, the slaughterhouse in Highland Meats and Soul Coats. I, I, I had a lot of different roles. I actually worked in the freezer. I actually done things like one of my morning jobs was I would obviously have to go in, put on my whites, which is obviously your whites to make sure you don't get any blood and fecal matter and things like that on you, and obviously your hairnet and your wellingtons. And I would go in in the morning and I would go through to the slaughter, uh, the killing hall, sorry, and collect things like the offal, which is the, the hearts, the liver, the kidneys, mm. tongues, things like that. So I obviously seen a lot of what obviously went on inside the, the, the killing hall as well because of that. And there was quite a mm. lot of disturbing things like fetuses lying at the carcasses of the mothers, mm. the tears running out. Yeah, Sorry. I was, I was going to ask, how much were you being paid and what were the kind of working hours like? The working hours were extremely long. You were in there from about 6 o'clock in the morning, roughly to about 10 o'clock at night, and I was getting paid mm. £2.50 an hour. Is that, um, so obviously because that was back in 1997, was that because that was minimum wage or was that just they were... Kind of that, taking the yeah, that's just exactly the way they were. They, were, they basically tried to get as much out of you as they possibly could. Like I say, that's what a lot of people don't understand. Like They think that people want to obviously work in these places, but in my situation, I was a bit like everybody else. I was a semi-professional footballer at the time, and I was playing for Scotland under 16, so I was on a developmental contract, so I wouldn't earn money until after three years. So the job centre counted me as being unemployed, and I was actually forced in there. And that's what quite a lot yeah. of the guys are. Yeah, because I, I was I was actually going to ask. I was like, how how did you end up there? You know, so you ended up there because you well you were almost forced there to. Because, Correct. Yeah, I was kind of been unemployed. Yeah. Yeah. So how I mean how how exactly what was the process of you kind of signing up and getting there? Did you go through a job centre? Yeah. Did you go through like a friend or? I went through a job centre, they, they, they actually, the job centre was constantly fo phoning my mum my and my dad We obviously jobs at that point and I went for a series of interviews, obviously I didn't get any other ones but they sent me to there and I, I turned up on the day and basically the process, the way they ask you is like, they'll offer you a job and they'll say look, well, you're going to such and such area, like you go to the, the box the box hall, you go to the parking hall, you go to the killing hall. I actually was at one point when I was in there actually asked to go to the killing hall and I categorically refused that I told them I was going to walk out so I obviously always had that ethical connection in my mind that what was going on to the animals was wrong. Mm. So you never um, actually took part in any of the killing whilst you were there? No I didn't, I, I told them I just couldn't do it like I say. I you, was, just, you were just completely against it. Yeah, exactly, because I always counted myself as an animal lover, but I couldn't see the cognitive dissidence that I was actually portraying be actually still consuming animals while loving them the same as I do my, my cats and my dogs or my companion animals. Of course, of course. And um, with regards to your interview, what, what kind of things did they ask you? Like, did they say, are you happy with this? Or are you not happy with this? Or was it pretty much like they could just get you straight in and you know, you were immediately working. Yeah, you, you basically just turn up in the day and they'll say to you, that, look, we've got a job for you, you've got a job in the packing hall, are you okay with that? Start Monday or start next week. It's, there's no real process, like I say. They, they, I think that they'll basically just take on anybody because at the end of the day, I, I think it's one of these jobs that obviously a lot of people are forced into. You feel sometimes that migrant workers especially as well, they're, that's the first place they're sent to as well. Yeah, so I mean, the one of the kind of facts that we're going to be leading with in this article is, um, well, we we've somehow related it to Brexit, obviously, but like yeah. you know, 
there's 68, I think it's 68% of all the workforce that are in ab- abattoirs are migrant workers. And so, That's you know, with, with, you know, people that, you know, Brits who don't want to work there and obviously it becoming more harder for um, migrant workers to come over and do that job, you know, the question is raised, well, then who's going to do it? Um, so that's kind of like, yeah, so with more about the migrant workers, were there quite a lot when you were working um, back then? There was only a small percentage back then, but actually what I'm seeing is because I actually go back to that slaughterhouse because I'm, I'm an, an organiser with the SAVE movement here in Ayrshire, and recently, recently there's a bigger category, I would say probably about maybe about 40-50%, it's about half and half, but it seems to have escalated over the, the last maybe, I don't know, five years maybe. And why, why, do, you, why do you think that is? I'm, I'm not sure, I, I don't know if it's obviously because there's a bigger migrant population in the country now, I, I don't know if that's the reason, or they just it's maybe just because they can get them cheaper, maybe. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. So, so do you regularly go back there then to kind of... I, yeah, do it twice, twice a month usually. We do vigils outside there, yeah. Oh, okay. And so what, what kind of things do you do with the vigils? Obviously, I, I, it's a candle vigil, I would assume. No, actually, what it is, is obviously we're, we're part of the SAVE movement, so what we actually do is we we actually bear witness to the animals obviously going into slaughter, so the, the police turn up, they obviously stop the trucks for us and let us bear witness to the animals for three minutes. So basically, okay. the, the SAVE movement, basically what it is, it's a group, it's a groups around the world who actually bear witness to things like cows, pigs, chickens and farmed animals all en route to slaughter. And basically what our aim is, is to raise awareness of the plight of these animals to help people become vegan. And we, we, have, we have around about 600 groups covering Canada, US, Ireland, Australia, right through to Central and South America as well. And, and how many people go to the vigils when you post them? Usually we, we, we at least have 10, but obviously if we get like a bigger personality, like Joey Cabstrong obviously came over last year, he's an animal rights activist from Australia, and with James <laughs> Aspie, and they can, we can get vigils roughly to about 40, 50 people when they're there, so... Oh wow, that's good, yeah. And so, when um, when you were at the abattoir, um, what was your kind of last straw to to leave? Um, I, I know you mentioned it at the at the beginning. It was something to do with your your mum, was it? Yeah, my my mum actually passed away because long term cancer in the womb that she had me, and she was suffering for mm. seventeen years various different cancers, and she passed away at that mm. point. And that actually was the catalyst for my eating disorder at that point, and I took obviously no mm. well, but. I was I was looking for other jobs out of there anyway, and I was determined to leave, and that just kind of was basically pushed me out as well in that respect. But I was going to be leaving anyway, so. Mm. And so, from what I've gathered from your YouTube videos and your kind of story, is that it was through this eating disorder you actually became vegan because you you came across someone in a, in a hospital. Yeah, that's that right? that's correct. Yeah, like. It, mm. What actually happened was I met, I met a vegetarian in the hospital and obviously like, vegetarian is not the end goal because there's a lot of contributing factors to obviously the dairy industry that goes on on there. Mm. But she gets speaking away to me and she was talking about how she became vegetarian and how she loved her dog and why there was no difference to like a cow or a pig or everything because they all feel the same, they all want to live and they, they, want, they don't deserve to die. And, I, it struck me because I always had thought that, but I had typically shut it out because I didn't think that I wanted to admit that I was actually part of the industry. And it's just like anything, like you say, you've got it. You, you, you're brought up, up from an early age to obviously believe that you need beef for protein and milk for dairy, and you just don't <coughs> see it. And it's all this propaganda that's out there. And she was just one of the kind of key components that helped me go ve- vegan at that point. And then I went out and I went to a, a vegan festival in Glasgow and I met a, a woman called Lynn, Lynn Jolly who actually run the SAVE movement here in Scotland. She got chatting away to me and then Ferreira became a vegan activist. Okay, and so what I was, um, I mean, I don't know if we'd be able to publish this, but this is just purely for if we ever need a right to reply, but um, what, which was the abattoir that you worked in? Highland Meats and Soul Coats. Okay, fine. I don't think, I don't know whether or not we'll publish that, I mean it really depends on how much we get, yeah. um, 
because you know we, we do want other accounts of people working there, not necessarily people who have you know gone vegan, yeah, but, you know, people yeah, who work yeah, there. You know, because because I mean our our main goal is to kind of have that conversation, and it's not that we can you know not convince people to go vegan. We can at least make people aware that there are some major issues in the food industry that kind of do need to be addressed. That's it, um, yeah. And obviously, you know, we need to kind of know this place because we need to ask them whatever. But that's if we go down that route. I, I, it's still early days on this story yet. So yeah. it was, it's mainly depending on what I can get out of you, basically. Yeah, in, the, in the nicest way possible. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I mean, I've got, I mean, I've got loads of questions here. Um, so what type of person kind of works in a, at an abattoir? Like if you were to draw up this person, describe what this person looks like or acts like, you know, what, what is this person? Well, it's, it varies in a, a big demographic because, like I say, a lot of people are just like myself and didn't want to work in there, but you obviously get some people that come from obviously really poor backgrounds, that's typically what actually works in there. But mm. it causes an awful lot of issues as well because a lot of the guys that were working in there that was actually doing the killing hall, they were getting through their day on alcohol, heroin and oh, everything wow. like that and, which a lot of people obviously don't understand because I think that's just obviously to get themselves through it because they don't want <clears> to actually <throat> be doing that. And um, was that during work or was that, was that after? That was, after that, work? that was during work, yeah. Mm. You, were, you were seeing them coming in in the morning, they'd, they'd been full of alcohol the night before, some of them really high on drugs and things and I'm quite sure the, the, the bosses in there knew that but it's it's a very it's like a bullying process that they go through because the managers and the for the managers the directors right all the way down they actually bully people in there you were constantly being threatened with them actually going to take you outside and give you a pasting and things like that and it's and then how would how would they do that you know how would how is discipline kept. <sighs> Really, it was really, really bad to be honest. It, like, there, there wasn't any kind of discipline at all. It was just you were constantly bullied all the way down. It was, and I think that's people have spoke about it out in my YouTube channel, even welfare managers saying that, that there's been bullying tactics going on, and they're saying that it was turning a workforce into crumbs of themselves, basically. And obviously, the welfare mm -hmm. of the animals is was most important because they were getting mm -hmm. it's the animals and the, the workers as well. Mm. And uh, just, this just popped into my brain as well. Did you guys ever have like quotas or anything to meet, like for the end of the day? So, for example, if you were in the killing pens, you'd have to go through X amount of animals, or you'd have to pack X amount of meat, or anything yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Typically, that's what will always happen. You would obviously have like the hides, the sides, and the quarters. You obviously had to get through, mm. say, what, a certain amount of them each day, and obviously, uh, usually it was about. 2,000 animals that were killing per day at that point, oh, so wow. it, it was, so yeah, it's on a massive scale. Mm. And I mean, is this, because obviously I haven't looked up the avatar myself, but is the avatar quite big? Is it still like a... Is yeah, it it's, it's, a, it's a really big one and recent, they, they obviously got into a lot of debt problems recently because what actually happened, they had a big court case out about them a few years back because they actually cloned a bull and put it into the, the food chain and it actually went to McDonald's. So, oh, wow. they, yeah, they were, they were in massive debt and they've actually, they've, they've joined up with a, a company called Dunbass, they're a, an Irish company, but they're partly halal, so they've went 50-50 with them recently to obviously, because of them, it's bad the debt problems. Mm. And that's, that's actually a good point. Are, with these slaughterhouses, are they specific, do they cater for halal, or do, do you have to have different places for those? Yeah, you t typically they're, they're all different places, but the slaughterhouse that I actually worked, worked at, they were captive bolt guns, so that's what they use, but quite a lot of them do do halal, especially the, what actually happens, we've got a pig slaughterhouse we go to and the supposed RSPCA approved humane way to kill an anim, a pig in the, the UK is be 80% of them actually gas through CO2 gas chambers and that's the way they do that and it's, it's horrific, like I say, we, we wouldn't want that done to our dogs or our cats, so why should we think that it's okay to do it to pigs? Mm, that's a good point. And, um, well, I think I'll kind of close on this one. Um, 
Well, actually, no, I'm going to close on two, because there's one I, I also want to ask. Um, your main opposition against eating meat, okay, is that due to ethics, health, or your experiences at the slaughterhouse? Hey. But if, try to avoid and say all three, if that makes sense. It's, it's, it's one of those, like, the main, main one. Yeah, it's, it's due to ethics, because, let's see, it's the, we're facing the last largest mass extinction in 65 million years. We're slaughtering 74 billion land animals every single year for food purposes. And there's about 137 plant and animal insect species lost every single day due to re rainforest destruction. And let's see, dairy cows, they're, they're spent at six years and then they're sent to slaughter. They're forcibly impregnated. Females are sent back into the system and the males are left to die and they're sent to the veal industry. And, the chickens, they're forced to lay eggs in confined areas, roughly about 300 a year. It's, it's unbelievable what we're doing. Let's say we're exploiting animals for everything, through leather, honey, animal testing, even entertainment for zoos. We're, we're treating animals as commodities, and that's not what they are. They're, they're, they're hearing this up for us, along with us, not for us. Mm. And do, do, you, do you own any pets? I do. I've got, I've got obviously dogs, cats, rabbits, mm. guinea pigs, but what I always say, I don't own them. They're, they're, they're their own people, they're, they're companion animals, and that's what I think a lot of people do. They attribute them as being ownership. That's that's what mm. vegans are against. We're, we're obviously, every, everything's yeah. equal to us, and that's the way it should be. But mm. Well, okay, that's cool. And oh, where was the, my last question? Oh, yeah, so my last, my last question would be, um, do you think vegans suffer with an image problem at all? I, I wouldn't say we suffer with an image problem at all. I feel like, I, I don't know, no, I definitely wouldn't say we suffer with an image problem. Mm. I, would say, I would say, sorry, but the, the only reason I, I ask is when um, you were probably aware of the thing that happened in Brighton um, a couple of weeks ago where they went into a restaurant playing the um, the dying cow sounds and right, yeah. public kind of, and the response that from the public was not very good. We're talking people who are just kind of like in the middle ground. Yeah. Um, and so the reason I, I put that to you is just because obviously with the arguments that you've explained, everything sounds like yes, this is the right thing to do. It does logically make sense, and yet people still kind of don't go along with it. So. My theory is maybe it perhaps has an image problem. I mean, what would you say about that? No, like I say, at the end of the day, I, I, I don't always support the, the certain actions, but I support the message, and that's really important. I say, what's worse, somebody going into a restaurant, obviously disrupting something, or is the animals getting subjugated, enslaved, and slaughtered every single day for food purposes? What's more mm. extreme? What's more extreme here? You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a good point. Very good point. Um, yeah, that's pretty much everything I've got, Tommy. Um, I mean, unless you have anything you'd like me to be aware of, yeah. obviously I've, I've told you before that I would really, really like to speak to kind of more people that you know. Yeah. Um, maybe even people that go to your vigils, you know. Um, definitely, you know, I could, I could definitely, I could definitely get a few people for the vigils that go. I've got a few friends, obviously Sarah and Ryan, and quite a few others, and mm. a few others that actually would be willing to speak. Definitely. Yeah, because we, I mean, the, the main angle is to kind of to do with the abattoirs and the experiences of the abattoirs and Definitely, stuff like that. Yeah. So, you know, if these people do have that kind of experience, we, you know, we'd love, we'd love to chat to them and stuff. Um, and also, um, I would love to see some photos of the vigils, um, just so we can yeah, kind of show them can see you yeah. and stuff. Um, it, it's basically, you know, your guys is time to shine because you know we want this to kind of generate a conversation and you know get people like really really involved whether or not it be negative or positive you know that's down to the public to decide but you know we want to be going with this is what's happening discuss and nuanced as possible um i would yeah, say I would, well. so, I would say as well what i was going to cover that i don't know if it'd be relevant but some of the things that was obviously happening to the, the, the actual animal flesh in the slaughterhouse when we were there, like, they actually used to get quite a lot of redated meat sent back to them from obviously the, the supermarkets. Yes, I, saw, that, I saw this in your videos. Yeah, yeah. cancer of scroves and things, and they were obviously taking the cancer of scroves off and obviously repackaging it and sending it straight back out into the food chain. So I think that would probably be something that a lot of the public need to look at as well because 
Mm. You're consuming this stuff and that's going into your body as well. And yeah, that's a very good point. Yeah, no, I, I, I've been watching a few of your videos and I do remember that you um, you mentioned that in, in one of them. Um, yeah, so, I mean, that's, like I said, that's everything I've got. So, I mean, unless you have anything that you'd like me to be aware of. Um, yeah, well, I would you know, just finish off. That, that. <laughs> yeah, I would just finish off with saying that I think it, it's really important to me a bit, but because the way I do believe in veganism, I, I don't. I think, I believe veganism is, is, is the answer, but it's only one of the answers. If we actually want the world to be a better place, then we obviously need to show compassion, justice, and obviously stewardship towards everything. I think top, top activists obviously need to challenge all vegans to be even better. If we have the opportunity not to drink almond milk because it requires large amounts of water, please are only yes. cheese dying, leads to gigantic monocrop fuels which obviously leads to soil depletion then I think we as vegans should not be drinking almond milk sure it gets tricky with the world and like systems in place but if we want the opportunity to make every easy changes then why wouldn't we I think it's really really easy and I think that people need to look at the world's basically dying every single day now we've been told by scientists that we've only got around about to 2030 to actually make changes and I think that's something that a lot of people are actually going to have to look at as well because it's it's really, really terrible what's actually happening to the animals every day. And there's actually been a study yeah. by the Oxford University that actually says that by, that was a five-year study looking into farming damage on the environment and they actually proved that if the world were to adopt a plant-based diet, we'd obviously could save agricultural land by 75%. Mm -hmm. And The Guardian actually published an article recently as well, it's to avoid the rise in two degrees for global warming temperature. And here in the UK actually we have the, to look at the ability to reduce what beef, pig and lamb consumption by 90% and dairy by 60%. So I think that that's everything we've got to look into because animal agriculture is the leading cause of everything that's going on in the world at the moment. And it's, of course, of course. That's been the choices we make three times a day, but we're we're knife from our fork. <laughs> yeah. Um, tell me, how would you how would you um, title my article? How would you title it? Hmm. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> I never ask it. I've asked it a couple of times, and I'm just always keen to see what people like to be up like title. Hmm. That that is a good one, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Hmm. You've got me. You've got me thinking on the spot here. I don't know. To be honest. That's alright. I mean, I won't put you on the spot. If you do come up with any ideas, do send them through. Yeah, I mean, definitely. We'll we'll obviously like, we're not asking you to do that, but just every now and then I do like to ask people I interview just to be like, oh, where, where do you think this interview has went? So it's just nice to basically hear feedback from you. Yeah, I think it'd um, probably be good to something to see like. You, do you, so, so you say you love animals because most Brits do. We actually we love our dogs and our cats. We spend hundreds of pounds a year on them. But conversely, there's a, a world of animals we obviously pay to have exploited and violently slaughtered. They, these are the farm animals as well, and that's kind of what we're talking about here. Mm, of course, of course. Well, Tommy, I'll, I'll show you go. Thanks very much. Really appreciate it. Thank you for taking the time to chat to me. Um, again, if you know of anyone who's willing to kind of come my way and I want to it, definitely yeah it's to, to chat um that'd be great also do um send over uh, photos of the visual i'd love to see the photos and kind of see what you guys get up to as well so, thanks very much um, and also i'm sorry i forget the um the name of the organization you're part of what was the yes your animal yes your animal save cool and if you could send me over like any um Websites or that's fantastic, um, yeah. Any like kind of promo stuff, but then like I'll be sure to link it in the article and say this is kind of what you're all about and stuff. And we'll obviously link your YouTube in there as well. That's great. Thanks very much. It's been great speaking to no, you. No, thank you, Tommy. Speak to you soon. See you later. Mate. Bye. Binge on life, purge negativity, and starve guilty feelings. Speak to you all soon and love you so much.